I'm Connie Walshan and I have a company called I Live for Desserts because I absolutely live for desserts in Tracy, California. And the reason why we're doing all about that base is because if you start with a good base, then you can do any dessert, whether it be gluten-free, dairy-free, or regular. If you start with a good base, all of them will turn out just fine. So today we're going to start with three different desserts. We're going to start with the dairy-free, the gluten-free, and the regular. And the reason why we are starting with the dairy-free first, because it's the least offensive, the gluten-free is the next offending group, and then the regular is all offensive. So we just wanted to keep them all separate because in our shop as well, this is how we do our bakes. We make sure to keep the cross-contamination down. And if you're doing multiple variations, that's exactly how you want to do it too, to keep your guests and your family members safe. So we'll start with all about that base. So we're going to be doing three different recipes. We're going to be doing a dairy-free or a vegan one and then we're gonna be doing a gluten-free and then a regular. And the reason why we're splitting them up is because we don't want any cross-contamination. So we start with the least offensive and then we end with the most offensive. And that way you don't have to have any cross-contaminations. I also like to start off all of my recipes with gloves because your dough can get sticky and you don't want to have to be peeling it off your hands and wasting all that time. So we like to have our doughs already kind of pre-based. Like when you go to the grocery store, you have your base dough in a box. We make our own bases so that we can kind of save steps and not have to waste a lot of time. In our shop back home, we tend to do things in a much larger scale. So this is a little bit smaller scale. I've done half batches so that everybody can kind of get a touch of what it is. So we're gonna start with the Kourbis, which is a Greek dessert. Everybody thinks when they hear vegan, tofu, and it's not tofu at all. It's not kind of gross, it's not slimy, it doesn't taste any different. It tastes amazingly the same as all the rest of the food. It's actually very nice. This is an almond orange pastry cookie kind of combination. It also comes in a crescent form, so it's really nice if you're having a party, you can kind of showcase your skills there. And then you want to start off with your powder blend. So you're going to put it in and you're going to want to use your dough hooks because your dough hooks are what's going to keep your blades from becoming um, dull. If you use a regular beater blade, it's going to dull the blade out and then you're going to find that it's not going to um, mix your blend as well either. You'll have to end up scraping it with a spoon and that can get a little bit obnoxious. So I use two cups of all-purpose flour. I use a whole grain so that we don't have any of that fake stuff. I like to use all natural products in our desserts. And then you're going to use three cups of powdered sugar as your base with your powdered sugar and your flour mixed together. Then you're going to make sure that that's kind of in your bowl and to the sides because when you add your next step, your next step is going to be the vanilla, the almond syrup, and then the butter. So we like to put in a, a dairy-free butter and the dairy-free butter that we like to use is made from plants. We don't like to use anything with soy because soy gets into your body and it doesn't break down the way it's supposed to. And the reason why we like to use syrups and our blend is because when you're baking, if you use an actual extract, your syrups will stay and your extracts will bake off and that won't have the same flavor. So you wanna make sure that when you're baking, you're always using a syrup so that the flavor stays in instead of baking off. You don't wanna have any of that stuff. So you wanna start going with a slower blend so it kinda gets all in there. You don't wanna go too fast or otherwise it'll splatter everywhere and as it starts to get mixed in then you can start to get your blend going a little faster and a little faster and then what you will do is you will turn it off and you can start to use your fingers to kind of push in the flowers and the powdered sugar off the side so that it starts incorporating because now your butter 
is nice and blended. And you want it to be blended so that it's fluffy, because when it's fluffy, it attaches to your flour, and then it makes a bigger uh, rise when it bakes. Because otherwise, it'll kind of flatten, and then it won't look like a cookie, it'll just look like a biscuit. There is a little bit of a difference using a standard kitchen mix than with a commercial mixer. So if you have a standard mix, you're gonna have to get your fingers in there and you're gonna have to get it up off the bottom just a little bit, but it's not like too terrible. So once it starts getting more crumbly, then you're gonna wanna add in your syrups. You don't wanna add in your syrups too early because then it'll just clump into one part of your batch and you want it to distribute evenly throughout the batch. You don't want it to just be in one part because then it won't be all orangey. And the orange and the almond is going to be your star of your dessert. You're going to add two teaspoons of the orange syrup. This batch is going to be more of a crumbly cookie dough. It's not going to be your typical like sugar cookie dough where it's more buttery because it doesn't have all of the fats that a traditional um, cookie dough has. So you're going to find that it's going to be more of a, a crumbly batter, which is why we like to use our trusty scooper because it's very helpful. And now your dough is all ready. So it'll kind of have this coarse look. It'll look like it's not really ready to do anything, but it's amazingly ready. It'll have just a slight orange color, not too much from the syrup, but that syrup will stick in there just great. And when it bakes out, you won't lose any of that orange flavor, which is so wonderful. It takes a couple of seconds of just mixing. It's actually not too long of a time. I kind of find that Massaging your cookie dough is a little bit therapeutic. Kind of can get out all the frustrations of the day, your children, your husband, your dog, your cat. And just get in there and kind of squish it all in. And if you're like me, I got five grandchildren. It's a lot. And sometimes when you're trying to get out the door, you're like, just at the end of your wits, you just get a good batch of cookie dough going and it makes the whole day better. So in your batch that we do our base batch in, you will have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. You will have one tablespoon of orange zest. And you will have, your flour blend is three quarters cup of all purpose. Three quarters cup ground almonds. The reason why you want them ground and not whole is because when they cook, you don't want your cookie to have a hard bite to it. You want it to have a soft kind of breakaway pastry texture. You don't want it to be all hard. This isn't that kind of cookie. And when you go to scoop them, we use this small scoop. This is the equivalent of like a quarter cup. It's a nice size scoop. And you will take it in there and it won't look like it's gonna work, but it totally does. You squish it in like this, and then you just pop it right onto your pan and it works wonderfully. Then you're gonna use this to get your base. So there, but you're gonna use to kind of roll into a roll. Press it, and then you're gonna split this roll in half. You're gonna kind of roll it in a almost like a crescent shape. And then you just put it there. You wanna do your powdered sugar dipping last because if you start messing with it, well, you got your gloves on, you're just gonna make a big mess. And it also makes it a lot longer that you have to do this stuff. So this is the fastest way. When you get it on there, just kinda of scrape it into position. It is a pastry cookie, so it's gonna be a little bit different than a traditional cookie where you can just kind of plop on and go. You are gonna have to manhandle it just a little bit. Get it split up. You don't wanna have too many of your crumbs on your 
baking one. And what I like to use these silicone mats because I find that they bake a little bit easier and a little bit more even than your wax paper even. But parchment paper and wax paper will work just fine. I'm just not a big fan of it. And if you're using a commercial kitchen, you then you will have your setting at 325 because the heat will rotate and swirl differently than a regular oven. If you're using a standard oven, then you will want it at 375 and you will bake them at eight to 10 minutes, depending on how hot your kitchen runs. So the baking part is actually not the longest part. The longest part is always the preparation. One more and then we're gonna get it all ready to set into the oven. And again, we're gonna, since we're using a commercial convection oven here, we're setting it at 325 for eight to 10 minutes. If you are at home, then you're going to want to put it at 375 for eight to 10 minutes. And you will watch it in the oven and as it starts to get a little bit brown, you're gonna look at it as if you're cooking a shortbread dough because it's gonna have the same kind of look and texture to it. So you're gonna look to make sure it's just a little bit brown, not too much. It is going to have um, an outer flaky texture and then an inner moist. So it's gonna melt in your mouth kind of like the tea cake. Then after you get them all set, you're gonna come over here to your orange and powdered sugar mix with your you're going to dip it in there and you don't want to be too rough with it but you do want to kind of roll it around and then I like to do it twice and then also when it comes out of the oven you're going to do it again because you want it to be nice and full of this orange and powdered sugar been about eight to ten minutes and you want to take them out and let them cool for about two to three minutes so that your powdered sugar doesn't melt. So now that you've got them all cooled down, you can pick them up, just roll them back into your powdered sugar and your orange again. You'll see the orange zest pops right out with this powdered sugar which is why it's such a good blend to put on the outside as well because you can actually see all the orange. This is actually one of our top sellers in our um, dessert shop for our dairy free and our regular customers as well. So a lot of our dairy free customers will come in and order them and our regular customers will be sitting there and they'll be like what is that? Is it good? And that's how we end up selling most of our dairy-free items to our regular customers and convincing them to become dairy-free as well. The good thing with these is that you're not using a whole lot of sugar. It sounds like a lot of sugar, but it's really not. So if you're having any kind of health issues like diabetes or you have a heart disease, these are actually really good for you as well as tasting good. Now that they've been cooled off, your sugar won't melt in. And when you go to package them or put them on your plate, they will just be really nice. So for the next one, this is our Death by Chocolate. This is a gluten-free. Now, traditionally gluten-free has a bad rap for being gritty and crunchy and not flavorful. So we worked real hard on our recipe to get it so that you have the, um, a moisture in it. And the whole secret is your base. Your base can either make you or break you, literally. So when you're doing gluten-free, your base has to be as full of moisture as possible. So you want to use real butter. Even though traditionally margarine is okay, it won't give you the saturated fats that you need to break down your gluten-free uh, flour. And you want to make sure that that is good and saturated before you start baking so that it doesn't get drier in the oven process. So what we like to do is we like to do our butter and our powdered sugar 
and our vanilla together first. I know traditionally they say add your dry ingredients first and then your wet. We do it completely opposite and we have had great success with that. So we take our butter and we put it in there first, then we add a one and a half cup butter. Then we do one and a quarter cup powdered sugar. We use organic ingredients across the board. So it costs a little bit more, but it keeps your sugar levels so that they don't plummet or they rise too fast. And then we like to use vanilla. You wanna use a real vanilla, not a fake one that you find in the grocery store because your vanilla will bake off. And if it's fake, it will bake off twice as fast. So you want to make sure it's a good, strong one. We like to use the Mexican vanilla in our shop. It just has a more of a nutty flavor, which we prefer. So we're going to add in one and a half teaspoons of the vanilla to your butter. And you're going to add your powdered sugar. And the reason why you want to add your powdered sugar and your butter and your vanilla together and whip it is because it will get nice and fluffy. The fluffiness actually helps with your base to make it rise the same way. And again, you want to use your dough hook because your dough hook is going to be able to get all around the sides and to grab the weight of the dough without mixing up all of your stuff together. So you'll see that your butter has a nice fluffy look to it when you pull it out. Then you're going to add your flour base to it as well. You're going to do three and three quarters cup of a gluten-free flour base. And all our flour base has almond flour, coconut flour, and rice flour blend, which is a nice combination because if you just do a rice flour or an almond flour together, it's going to be more gritty and dry. The rice flour actually has moisture in it, so it kind of puts some of the moisture back into your batch. Now, if you happen to have your flour stick into your bowl, don't use that part. That part will mess up your batch. So you need to go back in, mix this part again. You're going to start off low. If you start off fast, then your flour is going to explode all over the place and make a big mess and you don't want to do that. And then you're going to add in your cocoa powder and your, your powdered sugar mix is going to be in there as well. You add that in next. We use a dark cocoa powder. And chocolate actually helps save a lot of your recipes when you're doing gluten-free. Chocolate will be your next saving grace because it has a lot of nutty flavors to it. So it kind of can cover a multiple of um, different problems that you might run into. When your machine starts to misbehave and wants to make a big mess, just cover it up like this. You check. Once it gets to be there, then you can take your towel back off. You don't have to worry so much about it. So the last step is to add in your chocolate syrup. We like to use a simple, basic chocolate syrup with no fillers. We're going to do four tablespoons. You want to add that in last so that it can add the last of your liquids to it because this is going to be the part that makes your gluten-free cookies taste amazing instead of dry and gritty and crumbly. Because your dough is going to be a little bit on the thicker side now, you're going to want to go at a lower speed to incorporate everything in there because if you go too high, you will just burn out your motor and it's going to be too rough on your machine. A good flour to go with if you don't want to make your own blend is the Namaste flour. It's a really nice flour. It makes everything go really well. Because this is a shortbread, it's not going to have the same kind of texture as a sugar cookie, but it is more moist since it is a gluten-free blend.
This just gives you a more uniform cookie. You don't end up wasting a lot of space. There's not gonna be a lot of spread with this cookie because it is a shortbread. Shortbreads don't typically spread. And the good thing is, is shortbreads also don't take a long time to cook. So put them in the oven, eight to 10 minutes. A Couple minutes to cool and you're all done. We started doing gluten-free in our family when our kids were little because they have Crohn's disease. You can't have a lot of fiber in there and then you just flatten them just a little. You don't want to like squish them. You just want to push just a little. You want to make sure you're using your gloves because your hands will stick. And then that's it. Ready to go into the oven. So now that it's had its time to bake, you're gonna bring it out. Gluten-free cookies are typically gonna have more of a brownie texture, and that's what you want, so that you don't have that grit in there, which is really good. And so, you, so you can see, the shortbread didn't spread out as much as a traditional cookie, but it did spread out a little bit because it's gluten-free, and we need to make sure that there's some baking soda and some baking powder in your blend. Otherwise, all of the rice flour and the almond flour won't bind. So that's why you want to do that. So you just want to separate it just a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot here. Now you're going to take your chocolate blend. Now we make our own chocolate on site at our shop. So we use a dark chocolate, a semi-chocolate, and a bittersweet chocolate. When you're melting it down, it's important that you have some kind of butter component in there. You can use real butter, you can use oil. If you use oil, do not use olive oil. Olive oil will leave your chocolate with a weird taste and you don't wanna do that. You also can melt it in the microwave if you don't have a tempering machine in intervals of 35 seconds. If you do longer, you have a tendency to over temper it and you will burn it. And a burnt chocolate tastes terrible, so you don't wanna do that. So what you wanna do is you just want to take a tablespoon. And this is how you get death by chocolate. You are just slathering chocolate on your chocolate cookie. So you are definitely going to have death by chocolate. I find that this in particular pairs really well with a red wine. If you're a beer person, then a dark stout goes with it really good. Makes a good combination. If you are neither of those, a nice glass of milk is really, really good with that. And as you can see, I don't just like dessert. I actually live for dessert. It's before I started cleaning up my diet for my doctor, I would actually have dessert after lunch and then again after dinner. That's how much I like or live or love for dessert. So when you hear me say that I live for dessert, it is no exaggeration. If there was a word that was more appropriate for loving dessert, I would find it. So you're just going to give this just a couple minutes to set and it's going to be almost like a fudge layer on the top of your cookie which gives it that death by chocolate feeling. So this batch is called Caramel Blitz and it's just a standard shortbread but of course we couldn't just make it be standard so we put caramel on there and what we discovered on accident was that if you roll your caramel out it acts like a fondant and you can cut it and you can put it on anything so it's really amazing and you can use your cookie cutters and you can cut out your instruments with it really good so we did the same thing with the other two batches we blended our butter first with our vanilla and our almond again we use the almond syrup because it doesn't bake out while you're baking and it tends to stay you when you use your syrups you want to go with a name brand you don't want to go with an off market one because they don't bake the same there is um, a really truth when people say you want to stick with name brands because it's better quality it absolutely is better quality so you want to do that so after you get your butter blended and all fluffy which is the reason why you want to blend it then you're going to add in your powder and you're going to do your two cups of 
all purpose. I like to use a natural whole grain flour. I don't like any processed anything. We changed all of our diets because I was borderline diabetic and these things help keep your levels going right. And then we also use an organic powdered sugar as well. Now if you just pour it in like a Neanderthal, it's going to puff up in the air and make it look like a powder war just went on in here and you don't want that. So you want to go slow. You want to get it all in there. Remember to start it off with the slow process. You don't want to go right away into the fast beats because it will just shove out everywhere. As it starts to clump up in there, if it starts getting onto your sides, then you're going to want to go in with your hand, which is a good reason to wear your gloves as well. Kind of shove it down. You can use a rubber spatula, but what's going to happen is it's going to stick to your spatula where it won't stick to your gloves. So after we blended in the butter and the vanilla and the almond syrup, then we put it in the dry amount, which is the powdered sugar and the all-purpose flour. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla, one and a half teaspoons of almond syrup, and then we did one and a half cup of butter. The more natural your butter is, the more it's going to stay in your cookie. If you start going with a margarine, then it's going to have a tendency to spread out more than less. When you're done with your batch, your cookie dough is not going to look like a sugar cookie dough. It's going to be crumbly, and it's not going to look like it's going to do anything. So what we did for this batch, again, we did the two cups all-purpose flour, three cups powdered sugar. That goes in separate. That goes in your second step. Your first step, you want to blend the butter, which is one and a half cups of butter, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and one and a half teaspoons of almond syrup. You just want to massage it just a little bit when you get it all done. It'll clump together and it'll look crumbly and it will look like you can't do anything with it, but you absolutely can. And that's where your scooper comes in handy. Now if you use a silicone mat, you don't need to use any kind of butter or grease on your mat. You just put the cookie down on it. The cookie scooper makes sure that all of your cookies are about the same size. Otherwise, you have a tendency to make some big, some small. And if they fall apart like that, it's not a big deal because you are going to tamper them down with your hand. This is just to give you a ball park size on your cookies. The shortbread cookies are very similar to sugar cookies. The only difference is you aren't putting in as much sugar in your shortbreads as you are the sugar cookies. But they tend to have the same light compound, so they're not going to be overly sweet. And if you're cooking in different altitudes, then you're going to find that you might have to adjust your butter or your temperature or your time. So once you get them all in there, then you can come back in and you can squish them together in a tighter pattern. And then you just push them down. Our shortbread cookies are generally going to be more on the thicker side because we like ours to have a good bite to them. They also tend to make a really good pie crust. So if you don't want to do a traditional pie crust, you can always take your shortbread cookie dough and that also makes a really good pie crust. In our shop, all of our pies are made from our shortbread cookie dough. And we put them in there and it's like getting a second dessert with your pie. You're not just getting that. So once you roll them, you tamp them just a little bit and then you stick them in the oven at 325 if it's a commercial and 375 if it's standard and you do it for 8 to 10 minutes until they're just brown. So once it comes out, you're going to let it sit and cool for just a couple minutes. You don't want it to cool off too much because you do need a hotter cookie to melt your caramel, but you don't want it so hot that it melts all the way off. 
So now that they've baked, we're gonna go let them sit on here for just a couple minutes, which we did. And they are so nice and warm, so the caramel will have something to stick to. And we found out on accident that you can roll your caramel after you've massaged it and rolled it out like fondant. And you can use a cookie cutter and you can cut your pieces out. But this is the great thing about baking is there's like a chemistry to it. You can try new things. There's no wrong way or right way to try things. Failures are always the way that you're gonna figure out what works, what doesn't work. And you can totally come up with crazy stuff. And the good thing with caramel is after you've cut it, and if you're still short on some, you can come back through and get some. You want to get your spatula here to apply it up. Now working on this kind of fondant mat works best. See, look at that. It's so warm, it's already starting to melt when you put it on. Which is totally awesome. You don't want to do really thick discs, but just real thin ones. And if you try to roll your caramel out on the board, it's going to stick. So you don't want to do that. Go and then you let it sit for just a few minutes. You'll see that the caramel is already starting to melt there. And after it's gotten nice and gooey, then you're done and you're ready to eat it. Thank you for joining us at All About That Base, where we made these three cookies. We made the dairy free, the gluten free, and the regular. The dairy free is our Greek core beads which is a light pastry combination. It is orange and almonds. We made the gluten-free death by chocolate shortbreads, which are more like a brownie than a shortbread. And then we made our caramel blitz, which is a shortbread with a caramel on the center that we just were able to roll out and put on there. You can find us by going to YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook or you can always just go direct and find us at I Look For Dessert if you want more information on our actual dessert. But this is a way to make your platter look amazing. It looks like you spent all day in the kitchen and you didn't do anything. You just put it all together.